Everyone, can we just give the Lord a hand? Can we worship Him? Can we just exalt Him for a few minutes at least? Isn't it awesome to be in the presence of the Most High God? Come on. Can you worship Him one more time? Can you exalt Him one more time? I think it takes one more time to start a revival. It takes one more time of worship to cause something to happen in this place. I am just so excited to be here under His guidance, His presence. Come on. And over and above all of that, I'm so excited to be here in my dad and my mom's house. I mean, I'm the adopted son. You are the biological sons, you know. Come on, can you give it up for Apostle Nikki and Prophet Lillian? My mentors, my parents, I love them so much. My life revolves around them. I get like a little baby when they text me and when they just say hi to me. I get like a little baby. I honor them so much. <laughs> and all the selfies, yes, absolutely. Uh, thank God for my wife, my beautiful wife, to be with me, stand with me today. You may be seated. God bless you. Wow, I'm so excited to be here, to minister to you. I celebrate uh, the apostle. I celebrate the prophet. I'm so excited for them. My life, you must understand, I want to share a small testimony about me. So uh, I was fatherless from a very early age. I never had a biological father. So for me to come into a spiritual father took a lot of dealing, took a lot of shaking. Um, and I thank God that I met my dad when I met him. I was sitting, in fact, right there on the left-hand side. Apostle Maldonado was there, and, uh, and he was doing a call, and he was inviting people uh, to come under his covering, and I was sitting there, and I'm worshiping the Lord. I've been an orphan. I've been an orphan uh, spiritually. I've been an orphan in my life, and I'm crying out to God, running a ministry. I have sons with me, but I... But I didn't know what it is to be a son because I never had a father. I never had a biological father. Well, I had a biological father, but at a very early age. I think I must have been about eight years old. And then to come under this was just phenomenal for me. I, I was sitting worshiping, and the Holy Spirit said to me, Apostle Maldonado is doing the call for covering sons. And the Holy Spirit says to me, that's your father. That's who I want you to submit under. And his voice just echoed inside of me. My heart leaped. And I went back to our hotel room and I was telling my wife. And she was saying, you know what? The Holy Spirit was telling me the same thing. And I said, don't tell me, tell him. <laughs> and that was awesome, Dad. You know? And ever since I came into partnership, ever since I came under the covering, and I bought into the relationship, the power of association, my life turned around. My life turned around. My ministry turned around. I am impacting many people today in the south coast of KwaZulu-Natal because of a dad and a mom who gave me an identity, who showed me where I came from, and who told me where I'm going. Come on, somebody. So I'm just so excited about that and uh, all of the things that God has done. And I'm so blessed to be with you, NBCFC. I'm so blessed to be with you. I mean, I can't be oftentimes with you like some of my brothers and sisters that come every Sunday. So I have to watch you through television, through, uh, you know, through social media, through the platforms that are available. And when you guys jump, when you guys shout, when you guys scream, when you guys get excited, my faith is established on the other end. Something takes place in my house. Come on. It's because of you. Come on, NBCFC. We love you. Scottborough loves you. Highway of Holiness Family Church loves you. <laughs> Can you give it up for yourselves? Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, I know Dad has already, you know, asked you to greet somebody, but I would like you all to stand and face somebody because I believe that you are going to instruct what's inside of them to come out of them. There is a revival inside of them. So I want you to face them and I want you to prophesy over them. I want you to tell them that, you know what? I see blessings over your life. I see something inside of you. 
there is something miraculous taking place inside of you. I mean, it's going to come out. I don't care where you've been, what you did, what happened yesterday. But today, something is happening in your life. There's a revival coming inside of you. There's a revival coming out of you. You are coming out into fullness, into the fullness of God, into all that God has intended for you. Come on, somebody. Tell them, prophesy. That's the beginning of a revival. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. You may take your seats. I believe this year is a significant year for us. I believe it is a year of the dawning of a new decade in our lives. I don't know what the last decade gave you, what it produced. Maybe it brought you some, you know, bad news. Maybe it brought you some limitations. Maybe it locked up some stuff for you. But this is a new decade. Today is a new season. We are here to see something new happen. And so we, the church, are starting in the atmosphere, in the spiritual realms, a revival. We want God to come and manifest upon us physically, tangibly. His presence must come. The Bible says in Isaiah 64 that when God comes down, He levels the mountains. Every mountain that is standing up against you, when God comes, the mountains are leveled. The mountains are made low. Every mountain, the mountains of finances, the mountains of lack, the mountains of frustration, the mountains of relationship, the mountains that you've been going through in your last season. When God comes in this season, the mountains are leveled. It's a level mountain. Come on. It's a leveling mountain, God. I don't know about you, but I believe in Him. Come on, He's a level mountain in God. Every mountain that stood up against you in your last season is about to come down in this season. It's about to come down in this season. Every mountain. Come on, look at those mountains in your life. Look at those mountains that brought challenges in your last season. In this season, they are no more. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Shake a leg. Do something. The mountain must hear you. Come on, the mountain must hear you. Hey! The mountain must fear you when you walk. It must tremble when you walk. Do you know why? Because you carry the presence of God. You are who He is on the earth. So when you walk, the mountains must shatter. The mountains must scatter everything that stood up against you. Done. Come on. Say your mountains of defeat. Get out of my life. You mountains of failure. Get out of my life. Say you mountains that held back my relationships. Get out of my life. You mountains that put me down up here. Come on. Tell the mountains. We came to tell some mountains. I don't know about you, but I came to tell some mountains. The mountains that said to me, you're not good for you, you're good for nothing. You can't do anything. You're a failure. You don't have a father. Ah! Come on, somebody. Tell it mountain. Tell it mountain. You are the devil. God has put you under my feet. Ay, ay, ay. Dad, you are crazy. Hey. This decade, it is the year of the dawning of a new decade. This decade will bring you significant change. In the realms of the Spirit, I hear the word significant change. Somebody say significant change significant change that's what's going to happen in this decade some of you your children in this decade will get married eh? this decade is a very important decade some of you in this decade you become grandparents some of you in this decade your children will be driving fancy cars living in fancy houses owning double stories 
Come on, houses we did not build, cars we did not buy, businesses we did not plant in this decade. This is a significant decade. This is a significant decade. Don't take it lying down. That is why the apostle is crying for a revival. Because revival brings change. Revival brings alignment. Revival brings a vision that God has placed on you from the beginning. Now, maybe some of the stuff was hidden from you in your forefathers generations ago. Generations ago. But this decade, you are coming into knowledgeability of what was missed and left behind in the last decade. This decade, you will locate them spiritually and pull them into the now. What the devil held back from your past season, he won't hold back in this season. Come on. So I believe there's significant change. Some of you are coming into mega wealth. Yay. Hey. Only a few, you switched over to the new decade. Did you even open your mouth and say in this decade, I'm going to be a billionaire. In this decade, I am going to be a billionaire. Hear that, devil? Come on. Oh, oh, Papa. Oh, yeah. There's a sound of revival right there. Come on, this is my decade. are coming properties are coming children are coming this is my decade <laughs> please I apologize for this statement but my wife says shut your face devil somebody needs to tell the devil shut your face devil Hey, hey, So, this decade is significant for you and you must not take it lying down. You must build properly. The seeds are coming. You must build properly. Laying a foundation properly. You that are watching my television, come on, there's opportunities for you to put your seed. I know it's, you know, it's not a formal giving message. But the opportunity is there. The seed breaks ground. Seed creates opportunities. Seed brings you in front of kings. Seed opens doors. I don't know about you, but my word says, seed opens the windows of heaven. Seeds bring me to a place where I can have multiplicity of blessings. Come on, somebody. Your seeds are talking for you. You don't know why you come up so high in life. Because in your last generation, you had some parents who sowed some seed. They put some seed down. They put some stuff down. Now, mind the enemy might have took it, taken them out when you were young, but they put some seed down. You are big edifice today. It's because of their seeds. Hey. <laughs> can sit down as you begin this year 2020 you are establishing foundation for what is next to come you must be in a willing place so that you can appropriate the blessings of God you must be in a willing place the Bible says if you are willing and obedient you will eat the first is you have to be willing you must be in a willing place Say, I am in a willing place. Say, NBCFC for me is a willing place. Come on. Woo. Ha, ha, ha. So you must be in a willing place so you can appropriate the blessings of God because the church is moving into a rapid speed. I declare this decade, rapid speed, rapid advancement is coming to the church. We are going to be in the forefront. Do you know what? The world already knows that they got to look to the church to make money. 
they already know that, listen, before they make up a commodity or a service, they need to see what the church needs. There are four ways for you to give. Come on. It's in my notes. Hey! You must be willing to give in four ways. There is, a tran- there is a great transitioning taking place and the church is being pushed into the forefront. Why? Because just before the baby is born, there has to be some pushing. There, has, there must come some travailing. There must come some birth pangs before the baby comes. Uh, we are here tonight, today. We are here to push. We are here to travail for the greatest harvest ever recorded in the history of the church. This is the season of the greatest revival. Hey, if it took John G. Lake and Catherine Kuhlman and all of them, only two, three prayer warriors to start a revival, come on NBCFC. How many of you are here? We're going to pray tonight. If it only took two, three, four people to start a revival and be a CFC, you are more than 400 here. Those that are watching my TV, I don't know how many. We're going to pray for a revival. We want a revival. We don't want a revival like the yesteryears. We want a different revival. Hey, we want a supernatural revival. Hey, when you walk in immediately, you get changed. I like what dad said yesterday. Hey, all the Christians better go out. We got to make place for the sinners to come in. <laughs> come on, we are the marketplace people. We're going to stand in the roadside corners. All because of the anointing that's in our lives. When we step into the environment, that environment is changed. We come to change the ecosystems that we dwell in. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you were worried in your last season, right? Because you had to push to get over. You might have been just hanging on a silver thread. But guess what? You made it. <laughs> you are here. I came to tell somebody I'm glad you pushed even though you felt lonely. Even though you felt like a castaway. I'm glad you pushed, man. Nobody was looking. But you pushed. They didn't care because you came with a torn shirt. But you pushed. You, <laughs> you drove with a broken down car. But you pushed. Are there some pushes in this place? Hey, I got to talk to the men folk. Are there some pushers in this place? You got to push, man. You got to push. Somebody say push and pull. (laughs) Okay, let's do the word. John chapter 14 verse 12. Woo! We cannot live outside of the word. I want to read the word to you in John chapter 14 verse 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works. Say greater works. Then these will he do because I am going to the Father. (laughs) You're going to pick up some nuggets here. Relationship, faith, all of these things. As I read, whatever you ask in my name, relationship that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Validation right there. Because of association. Uh, My dad is speaking on validation. Increase. Come on. Let me go ahead with 15. If you love me, you will keep my commands. Um. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, the world cannot receive because the world cannot see him and does not know him. Mm. Uh, 
Come on, somebody. The Bible says that because I live in you, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in the Father, the Father in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by the Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. I want to talk to you about the seven keys for a revival. Now, there are many other keys. I'm just giving you seven keys, but they are not in uh, you know, any particular order. One doesn't take priority of the other. It is so important to have some keys. Some of us go to the door and we don't have keys. We need keys to open doors. Keys is what unlocks doors. Keys is what opens the door for you. You can be standing in the door and nothing happens because you don't have the keys. You can be coming to a place that's living and full of doors, but you got no keys. You can't access what's in that house. The number one key, key number one is faith to do greater works. You got to have faith in this season. I wish I had George Michael here, man. You got to have faith. Come on, you got to have faith, the faith, the faith. Where's my musicians? You must believe and have faith that we are in the days of greater works. The resources have shifted to us for greater works. Why is the resources being given to the church? So that the church can do greater works. The church has to have faith to believe that what God has placed is right in front of them for greater works. You must understand that you are here to do greater works. You are rapidly advancing in every area of your life for you to do greater works. Some of you advance, but you don't do the greater works. You must know and understand that whatever is coming on your life is to propagate the kingdom of God first. The rest is for you. Key number one. Don't put placards on your wall, the Desdoretta and the national anthem and this photo and that photo. Put your Bow to God on the wall so that when you come into your overflow, when you come into your plenty place, you can see the vow you made. Come on. How many of you know many a times I made so many vows in the presence of God that I forgot them when it came. Now I document every single vow. When I come into my place, this is what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. You must be diligent in the season for the wealth to come upon you. Because the wealth is there already because of your relationship with the house of God. The demand that is in the house comes upon you for greater works. Mm -hmm. Your finances are increasing. Your families will increase. Your influence will increase. Your relationships will increase. Your associations will increase. Everything in your life is on the increase. Why? Because you are being empowered to do greater works. You'll do greater works than John G. Lake, greater works than Catherine Kuhlman, greater works than Smith Wigglesworth. Come on. It says greater works, right? They built their ecosystem on faith to do greater works. What are you building your ecosystem on? I thank God it's because of this house, the ridiculous faith of the apostle and the prophet the ridiculous faith of this house, the leaders God has placed over me that has helped me to this point that I am where I am today and I can do greater works. You got to do greater works. Say, I am blessed to do greater works. Mm. I don't know about you, but I got to have some faith for God to move in this season of my life. Come on. Key number two, partnership. Whoever believes in me and the word in me, whoever believes in me, the word in me speaks of partnership. Another word for partnership is association. Thank God for the associations in my life. How about you? Can you thank God for the associations in your life? You are where you are today is because of the associations in your life. Thank God for the associations in my life that help keep my head above the waters even when I felt like I was drowning. Thank God for the church of God, especially the church that I am in because I am a partnership. I am in association with the apostle. I am in association with the prophet. 
and what they have, what they carry, what they get, I also am able to get. Dad spoke about the nets. Come on. When you're in partnership, you get to help with the nets. Come on, somebody. When you're in partnership, whatever is in the net, you also get to keep. Hmm. Come on, somebody. To stand alongside of them and be a part of the greatest movement that is taking place right here in our country, in, in the country of those that are watching, the viewers from all over the world. You may be watching by television, social media platforms, internet, YouTube, whatever platforms, but it's because of your association, you get deliverance, you get victory, you get healings. Come on, you get established, things happen. Partnership. What does partnership do? Brings a revival in my life. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 13, 14, and 15, whatever you ask in my name, the power of partnership, I will do it. Because you have partnership with God, whatever you ask, He will do it. Come on, do you have faith to believe God that He will do it today? Today He will heal some people, He will deliver some people. Today some people are going to get set free from bone disorders. Come on. Some people are going to get set free from heart disorders. Some people are going to get set free. Why? Because we are in partnership with God. And He said, if we ask, He will. I strongly believe the church is coming into its position of influence. This decade will see the church become the greatest influence in the nation. The greatest influence of the world. In this decade, the church will influence the marketplace. The church will be in the forefront of the marketplace. Business people are coming from where? From the church. Where do business people fit in? The marketplace. Say, I have power to influence change. Say, I have power to influence change. Say, I am a catalyst of change. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Tonight for me, because of partnership, I come into validation. <laughs> I am being validated tonight. Are you being validated today? Come on, it's validation day for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 12 says, The eye of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro upon the righteous. And he's attentive to their cry. Come on. Why? Because of partnership, we have God's eyes upon us. Because of partnership, He's attentive to our cry. The number three key for revival is prayer. The number three key for revival is prayer. The church is coming to a place where even while we are praying, God will answer. Because there's rapid speed coming upon the things that we are desiring because we are positioning ourselves in the right place, right attitude, with the right needs. How many of you know before you ask, God already knows what's in your heart? Yeah. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 24 says, Before they call, I will answer them. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. Come on. We are coming into rapid advancement. Rapid speed. Rapid shift. Everything is aligning. We must be able to be in the position of understanding that the influence you are getting is for the kingdom of God. The influence you are getting is for a revival. Uh, key number four is hunger. Come on. Key number four for revival is hunger. You got to be hungry. I want to share something. Isaiah 65. I just want to share this with you. Isaiah 65, the Lord says, I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, Yeah, I am, yeah, I am to a nation that was not called by my name. That is in direct link with Acts chapter 28, verse 28. The Bible says, therefore, let it be known to you that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles because they will listen. 
The way to move the hand of God and the way to create a revival is to be hungry. God was ready to present himself to a people, but they were not hungry. Isaiah 65, I was ready to come, but they were not hungry. Can I hear some hungry people in this place? Hey, come on, can I hear some hungry people in this place? In the one place, because there was a lack of hunger, God didn't show up. In the other place, because they were hungry, God left where he was supposed to go and went to where he didn't even want to go. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. If you are hungry, God will come. Doesn't matter how fancy your neighbor's house is. If you are hungry, God will come and eat with you. Hunger equals anticipation. Anticipation equals expectancy. Expectancy creates movement for God to show up. Hunger, expectant. God will show up. When God shows up, revivals begin. Miracles happen. Signs and wonders happen. Bondages are broken. People are set free. The sick are healed. The poor are delivered. Because God showed up. The reason why the attention of God moved from the Jews to the Gentiles is because the Gentiles were hungry for a movement. They were hungry for a revival. The reason why God comes to NBCFC. I, I, maybe I'm saying it wrong then. The reason why people are hungry at Highway of Holiness Family Church, why God shows up. I don't know about your neighbor, but I sense there's some hungry people, yeah? I know you're hungry because you're fasting. <laughs> but are you hungry for God? Are you hungry for God? Come on. Tell your neighbor, I see some hungry people, yeah? The groanings you're hearing is not because there's nothing in my stomach. The groanings you're hearing is because I'm hungry for a revival. Hey. Is Boxburg hungry for a move of God? Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Key number five, obedience. John chapter 14, verse 15. We read the scripture. You don't have to turn there. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Obedience, the prerequisite to obedience is love. Without love, you'll not be able to keep the commandments of the Lord because in a society like today, we can become very intellectual about the Word of God and we can make some plausible remarks to create inconsistencies in what we do. Inconsistencies destroy obedience. I know my message is not about giving or coming to church regularly, but the main reason for inconsistencies to the aforementioned is because our love is not sincere. Sincere love is laying it down even when you feel something is questionable, likable or not. Come on, sincere love is keeping the commands even when it doesn't benefit us. Your inconsistency is what will remove you from the job. I give you scripture for that. Luke chapter 9 verse 62. No one puts a hand to the plow and looks back. His foot for the inconsistency takes you out of the job. Come on, where's my revivalist? Are we going to go for a revival the whole year? Are we going to be consistent about it? Key number six, Vision. Spiritual vision. John 14, 17 says, Even the spirit of truth the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor it knows him. They don't have spiritual vision. But this house has spiritual vision. If you lack spiritual vision, then what is taking place here tonight and the last couple of days and the revival meetings to come will not be perceived correctly. Sight gives birth to perception. Your thinking and your perception will determine what will manifest next. Come on, we sing the song, if I can see it, God will put it into motion. Open your eyes now. Step into your season. 
Perception. What are you perceiving today? We'll unlock a revival in this place. Come NBCFC, I believe we are in a revival. Come on, those of you that are watching. We are in a revival. We are in the greatest revival. It starts like this. Key number seven, the love for God. Worship. Worship is what brings revival. Your love for God is what brings revival. John 14, 21, the love for God is what will manifest God in us. When we love Him, God manifests. The word manifest means God will show up and do His thing. He will demonstrate His power to the nations of the world so that they may know Him and fear Him that many will be saved. Why do we want a revival? We want people to come out of bondages, people to come out of sicknesses, people to come out of diseases, people to come into their potentials, people to come into their success. Why? Because we want them to get saved. They must know Jesus. They must love Him. He must be Lord over their lives and they must worship Him. Come on, somebody. I want to close with this, my papa. You know, his heart is for the kingdom of God to be established, the people's lives to be transformed, poverty to be removed from the land. And this is the season for mega increase. We are coming into a place of mega increase. Be sure that your purposes are in the kingdom of God. This is a season for the faithfulness of God to show up. Psalms 115 verse 12 to 15. If you can turn with me. The Lord has remembered us and He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. So I don't know, maybe you feel like you're small and God can't, can't bless you. But the word says, both small and great. So don't doesn't matter how small you are feeling right now, God can still bless you. <laughs> are there some people feeling small tonight? God can bless you. Now here's my favorite one. The verse 16 says, The heavens is the Lord's. The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth has He given to the children of men. Now here's the thing. Papa always says, people fight for blessings, enemies fight for territories. How about the people of the house of God understanding that the territories is yours? The territories are yours. Psalms 115 verse 16 says to me, the earth is ours. The territory is ours. It's time to expropriate the land. Come on. We are going to expropriate the land with recompense. Hey, the enemy may have taken the land from your forefathers. He may have closed up the wells in your last seasons. Your father's wells were shut up, but it's time for us to take the territory back. Territories are coming back. We're going to open up the old wells and the devil has to pay it back. He, man, his mother-in-law and his pet dog, they have to pay it back. Say it's payback time. It's payback time. Revival brings us into a place of payback times. The enemy must give whatever he kept in the last seasons and the other seasons and the forefathers seasons. Some of you don't even know the struggles your forefathers faced. But the devil must pay it back. We are the church and we are diligent for what God is about to do. And we are going to step into our season. We take the territory back. Come on, can somebody believe Boxburg? Come on. Where you are watching from, can you believe for your town, for your homes, for your cities, for your communities, for your families? Take the territory back. Territories are coming back. We're taking back our territories. Come on. Woo! How about the church rising up to expropriate the land? You know what expropriate means? Dad says it. Expropriate is snatching it back. You're not going and asking questions, please, may I have this? Can I have this? 
I'm here to take this. You know, my father had this in his last generation. No, we're expropriating it. We're taking it back. And we're leaving our, our invoice with the devil. This is what I think you should pay. Come on. Whoa. And the word for this church is that they are rising up in the midst 12 billionaires sons that will come and be consistent with the house of God for the vision that God has placed over the set man of the house I'm one of the sons I'm one of the sons I'm one of the sons If you heal to what God is doing, you will have the victory. You will have the validation. You will have the increase. Come on, somebody. Revival is coming. Revival is coming to your families. Revival is coming to your household. Some of you need to take your wallets and open them up and say, Revival is coming to my wallet. My finances are waking up. Come on. Yeah, your families are coming back. You thought you lost them in your last season. They're coming back. That's what a revival comes to do. It comes to bring them back. Hi. Woo. Revival is coming back. Come on, I believe that there's a release of supernatural finances supernatural unlockings supernatural healings deliverance if that's you come 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 we're gonna pray can i ask some of you to pray begin praying in the realms of the spirit we come now in the name of jesus we come in the authority of Jesus Christ. We come in the authority that Jesus is Lord.